so a few announcements. The exam solutions are posted. So if you go on Canvas and look under the solutions heading, you'll see exam one solutions and worked out problems posted there. The grades are also posted. If you have any questions about the solutions or, or your grade, um, let's do that during office hours. So let's answer general questions about the exam during office hours to today after class, if you want to stick around. Um, if you have questions about your grade or, or uh, any uh, grade issues, uh, shoot me an email and let's talk about those one-on-one. -on -one. I don't want to have you know, a community conversation where we have grade conversations, but uh, I'm happy to answer questions about the exam right after class today. Uh, homework four. So homework four has material that we're still going over. So I'm going to delay homework four due date. Homework four will not be due this Wednesday. So um, so put that aside. We're going to cover some material today that will will finish off what you need to do homework four. Prelab four will be due this Thursday. Thursday. So take a look at that. That's posted. And then on on Friday. So this Friday you'll start lab four. And I'll give you a preview of that today, as you see on the screen. So my office hours will be right after class today. TA's office hours are posted. Take a look at those on Canvas. If you need any uh, help any day of the work week, uh, we've got you covered. So come out and join us. And then, yes. So when will homework four be due then? I don't know yet. It depends if we finish up the material today. So I'll post that on Canvas. I want to make sure we cover all the material uh, and give you a few days to work homework for. Okay, thank you. Okay. So if you have any questions, uh, ask during class, unmute or chat, and I will try to see the chat window. I have a pretty low hit rate on that, but otherwise, please stay muted to keep the background noise low. So let's take a look at lab four. So on your screen now should be the slides for lab four. Um, so what you're going to do for this lab is first during the pre-lab, you're going to analyze the circuit and calculate the Thevenin equivalent. So between uh, terminals A and B, you can create the Thevenin equivalent shown on the right here. So you're going to determine RT and VT, the Thevenin resistance and the Thevenin uh, voltage. And so you'll do that analytically. And then during lab, you're actually going to perform measurements and calculate, uh, or, or based on measurements, calculate the Thevenin equivalent. And so that will be, the answers will be a little bit different because of tolerances and the resistors and errors in the, uh, voltage, the power supplies in your measurement, but uh, overall they should be very uh, similar values, but a little bit different. So this is how you're going to determine the Thevenin equivalent in, in, in lab. So this is the circuit with a load resistor applied, and I've got the load voltage and the load current defined. So to <clears throat> determine the is to see if you got the calculation for the Thevenin voltage correct, you're going to measure the open circuit voltage, which means don't you know, build the circuit and then don't connect anything to the terminals and just measure the voltage from uh, between terminal A and terminal B or VL here. And that should match your, your VOC value. And then what you're going to do is you're going to attach different values of RL, different resistance values, and you're going to measure voltage and current for that load. And you'll determine the, the current based on the resistance value. That'll be Ohm's law. But if you remember from the lecture slides down at the bottom here, this is a screen capture from the lecture slides. If you plot voltage versus current, as you change the, the load resistor value, uh, those voltage uh, versus current points will fall along a straight line. And this was the equation we talked about in class for the Thevenin equivalent. And so you're going to determine RT based on the slope of that line. And that's what this equation is up above, RT equals minus delta VL 
over delta I L. And so this is an actual plot. I did this lab and uh, I've got the axes taken off, but this is the actual plot of measured voltages versus current. So your plot should look something like this. When you do the measurements, be sure to zoom in so you can see the slope, right? Your, your measurement points should line up roughly on a, on a sloping line with a negative slope like this, and then calculate the slope uh, and negative that slope, right? The slope will be volts versus amps. That's an ohm. The negative of that slope will be RT. Okay, and then from that, you'll fill in your Thevenin uh, voltage and Thevenin resistance based on measured values. So, so then you're going to uh, also demonstrate maximum power transfer. You're going to take the circuit and you're going to change that RL value uh, to different values, and you're going to calculate the power voltage times current for each one of those values. And you should see something like this. This is power in milliwatts. Uh, versus load resistance in ohms, again, with the numbers taken off, so you can experience this yourself. But your plot should look something like this. You should, you should see that uh, when you zoom in to your values and whatever your favorite plotting software is, you should see that there's a peak. And, and right at that peak, um, that should represent where the load resistance equals the Thevenin resistance, and that's where you get maximum power transfer. That's where the peak power happens. You'll also take the Thevenin equivalent circuit that that you derived and do the same thing except in calculations you're going to say well I have a Thevenin equivalent circuit change the load resistance calculate the power for those same resistor values and you should see that the power roughly overlies your your power measurements of calculated should roughly equal measured with some differences okay so that's what you're going to see uh, upcoming in lab this week so take a look at that What I wanted to do now is, is start the class material. I want to jump back into time constants and steady state and show you a second way, as I mentioned earlier, of, of solving first order circuits. So where we left off last time is that when a circuit has reached steady state, and we said that's roughly after five time constants, the voltages and the currents have converged to DC, um, you can analyze a circuit using this steady state approach. You replace capacitors with opens because there's no current going through a capacitor in steady state. And you can replace the inductors with shorts because there's no current going, or there is current, there's no voltage across an inductor in steady state. All values are DC. Uh, so you, you, you do this and then you work your, your circuit. So I'm gonna do an example now on the whiteboard. So let's suppose you have this circuit and it's actually a second order circuit. Now we haven't solved second order circuits, but they're actually not too easy or not too hard to do. It's very easy to do uh, when you're working with steady state analysis. So we have a DC source uh, connected to a switch. So this source is gonna get connected to the circuit instantaneously. It's gonna cause a step voltage change across between the top node and the bottom node on the left here. Um, you have an inductor, 0.1 Henry's, a one microfarad capacitor, uh, and a couple of resistors here. And so what we want to do is find VC of T in the steady state. Okay, so here's how we're going to do that. We're going to uh, assume that time is much greater than zero. Okay, that means at least five time constants out. And so what we can do, we do is redraw the circuit like this. So I still have a source applying voltage, 36 volts. Right, that's Bs. 
the switch is now closed long after t equals zero. I have an inductor that I say I can replace with a short. So, so my, my L here, I'm gonna put L in parentheses, becomes a short in the steady state uh, because uh, V equals L di dt. Di dt is zero, so the voltage is zero. The capacitor can be replaced with an open because I is equal to C dv dt. dv dt is zero, so I is zero, that's an open. And I have still have a resistor. And I have another resistor here. So that's what I'm left with in, in the steady state long after that switch has been thrown, at least five time constants. But um, so what I would do here is analyze the circuit well the way I know how. I have a 36 volt source. I have two series resistors, right? The same current that flows through uh, R1 also flows through R2. So I would use voltage division uh, would be my approach here. So in this case, VC of T, equals Vs times R1 over R1 plus R2. Right, that equals 36 times 8,000 over 8,000 plus 4,000. Okay, and that winds up to be Vc of T equals, do that calculation, 24 volts for T much greater than zero, okay? That's how we notate steady state. Okay, any questions on, on this? How to go from a circuit f and convert it to a steady state equivalent circuit and then find the answer? Will we be asked to find the time needed till steady state? Um, in a in a first order circuit, yes. In a second order circuit, no. Gotcha. Thanks. Okay. So there is a, there's a way to to use this information. Um, pin a video here. That didn't work. Um, there's a way to use this information to actually solve a uh, first order circuit. Let me show you, this is the second way to solve a first order circuit. I showed you the first way, just solving the differential equation. Let me show you another way, if I can. Okay. You can use the initial value of voltage and current right after, let's say, a switch state is changed, and the steady state value, uh, along with the time constant, to solve a first order circuit, meaning determine any voltage or current. Here is what every first order circuit's response will look like. Every voltage will, will look like this. That, that has an exponential uh, response. So V of T is equal to VF plus the quantity VI minus VF, E to the minus T minus T naught over tau, okay? Uh, looks a little complicated, but it's actually not. Um, if you look at this equation, it is of the form K1 plus K2 E to the ST, just like we talked about uh, uh, before the exam. It's just that I've written K1 and K2 and S uh, in, a, in a different way that can be calculated from initial and, and uh, steady state values. So VI is the initial value. It's the value of the voltage at T equals T0 plus. So T0 um, is the time at which the switch is thrown. So if T0 is zero, in other words, the switch is changed at T equals zero, then T0 goes away here, right? It's, it's just a zero, but the initial, voltage is right after the switch is changed. The final value is the steady state value. 
So that's where the steady state analysis comes in useful to be able to figure out that steady state value. Tau is the time constant. We said that was RC for an RC circuit. We'll talk more about that. And, and I mentioned T0 is the time at which the step change or the sudden change occurs. So this is not only for voltage. This approach always uh, also applies to current. So you can see the, um, the similarity between these two equations. If you know the initial current, the final current, and the time constant, then you can figure out the first order response of a first order circuit. So how do you get the time constant? Well, the time constant, we already talked about this. When we, when we solved the differential equation and, um, and we got that exponential out of that differential equation, right? We, we, we saw there was an e to the something. Um, and then we equated that to e to the minus t over tau. We found that tau is equal to rc. The time constant of an rc circuit is r times c. When you have a voltage source and a series resistor series capacitor. For an RL circuit, and we're going to talk about this in a little bit, um, or apply this, but if you have, if you worked a problem with a resistor and an inductor in series, and you wrote the differential equation and you solved for the exponential, what you would find is tau equals L over R, the inductance over the resistance. Right? And so that applies to this series, resistor, and inductor, okay? So what I would like to, to take you through now is I want to solve this RC circuit problem again using this initial value and steady state value approach. Then we'll solve the uh, RL circuit, uh, which we haven't done before. We'll use the initial and final value approach. And then finally, we'll, we'll work a more complicated problem. So what happens if, let's say, you don't have a series resistor and a series inductor or multiple resistors in the circuit? I'll show you how to solve that case. So we're going to do that next. Uh, professor? Yes. So when it says T naught is the time when the step change occurs, is that just when the um, switch is thrown? That's right. That's right. That's so. If I had, uh, let me switch over to the whiteboard here. So if I said, for example, this switch is thrown at T equals six seconds instead of T equals zero seconds, then T zero would be six. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Okay, sure. Okay, so let's let's do this. So let's suppose I have an RC circuit just like we had last time. So this is going to be RC circuit. So the initial final value approach for this RC circuit. So what we found is that for this circuit, where you had a voltage source, a DC source of Vs, and then a switch that closed at T equals zero, and then a resistor and a capacitor. And we worked out a differential equation that let us find Vc of T. Um, we, we found this, that Vc of T, equals Vs minus Vs E to the minus T over RC, right? That's for T greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so that's, that's, what, that, uh, that's what that circuit did. So what I'd like to do now is, is try this, try the approach of Vc of T, equals VF plus 
the quantity VI minus VF E to the minus T over tau. And where tau equals RC. Okay, so we should find the same answer, but, but let's figure that out. Okay, let's figure out um, VI. I'll write VI colon, meaning I'm gonna find, I'm gonna find VI. So that's for uh, T equals zero plus. And we already determined that the voltage, beca because uh, I equals C dV dT, for a capacitor, that voltage cannot change instantaneously. You can't have a step change because you'd have an instantaneous uh, voltage change. You would have uh, an infinite derivative here. Okay, so this is also for just t less than zero. We've we've got some steady value for t less than zero. Let's find vi. Well, what we said is we said this capacitor started out uncharged. That was a given. So c is uncharged. So VI equals zero volts, okay? So we've got one term in our solution here. VF is the steady state value. Let's figure out VF and that's for T, oh, much greater than zero. So let's draw the equivalent circuit in the steady state. We wind up, uh, well, with that, that DC source, the switch is closed. There's still a resistor in the circuit, but the capacitor in steady state looks like an open. Right, so I replace that capacitor with an open. There's no current going through that capacitor in the steady state. This is our R value. So with the capacitor not in the circuit, you have zero amps going through that branch of the circuit. Uh, zero amps through a resistor results in zero volts across that resistor. So I can write a KVL equation to figure out what VC of T is. Right? Uh, let's start here and go around minus VS plus zero plus VC of T equals zero, right? And so that means VC of T equals VS in, in, in the steady state. Right? Okay, so VF equals VS. That's the steady state value. So now I can just plug VF, uh, VS, uh, VF and VI into the equation. And I get this, VC of T. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, I'll write this. Apply that equation. I get VC of T equals uh, VF, which is VS, plus VI minus VF, right? E to the minus T over tau, which is RC. Okay, so what you see is that, well, we get the same answer, either using the differential equation approach right up here, or this approach using the initial and final value. Okay, any questions on that? And then we'll work the RL circuit. Would there be any cases where um, V initial isn't zero? Yes. In fact, if I said that, if I just said here that um, 
uh, VI, uh, this capacitor has a charge on it at T equals zero. You could charge up this capacitor with, let's say, three volts, and VS might be 10 volts. And then your uh, VI would be, well, three volts, and your final voltage would be 10 volts. And so, so yes. would, both, mm -hmm. would both equations still equal each other if that was the case? Yeah. Uh, if, in, when we use the differential equation approach, we said um, we use the initial condition to find K2. And in that case, K2 would be affected by, you know, let's say the capacitor were initially charged to three volts. K2 would be affected by that three volt initial charge. So both equations would result in, or both approaches would result in the same equation. Cool, thank you. Sure. In the first approach that you did, um, mm -hmm. we found tau by uh, like putting it back into the differential equation. But in the second approach, you just said that tau was RC. Was that like just an assumption that you could make or? Yeah, in, in the first, the first time we solved this problem, we, we figured out what the exponential was. It was e to the st, right? And then we figured out what s was without even making any assumptions about the time constant. And, and then uh, what I said was, okay, uh, let's equate that to what we know characterizes the rise or decay of an exponential, and that's this tau value, and we figured out uh, that S was minus one over tau. And we figured out that S was, well, minus one over RC uh, using the differential equation approach. Since we did that, we know that tau for this circuit, when you have a series R and a C, it is RC, right? So, so that's, you, you, have to, you have to have done the, the differential equation approach in order to know tau is equal to RC. And then you can just use it. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's move on to an RL circuit. I'll just change this to an L. So let's take a source, Vs. Let's give it a value. Let's say this is 100 volts. And we'll have a switch that closes at t equals 0. Another resistor here. Let's give it a value of 50 ohms. And let's replace that capacitor with an inductor. Let's make that inductor 0 0.1 Henry's. And let's try to find the current I of T through that inductor. Let's also find V of T the voltage across that inductor while we're at it. I'm gonna work on I of T first. Okay, let's use the initial and final value approach. So I of T equals I F plus I initial minus I final E to the minus T over tau. And I just replaced the V's with I's in this case. And, and I'll tell you that um, uh, for an RL circuit, if you worked, if you solved this exact problem using the differential approach, you, the differential equation approach, you would find that tau is L over R. Okay, so we're just gonna say, yeah, we solved it. You can go do it. Um, but what you'll find is that that term in the exponential is L over R. So we're just going to use that. 
Okay, so let's let's work on uh, the initial condition, the initial current. So for t less than zero, um, what I'm going to say is that. Well, we know that I of zero minus, right, right before that switch opens, or I'm sorry, closes, right before that switch closes, closes, you have an open switch and no current is flowing. So for T less than zero, I of zero minus equals zero amps. Okay. Um, I'd, I'd like to figure out what I of zero plus is because that's really the initial current right after that switch closes. That's what we want to use, that initial current. And the relationship between voltage and current for an inductor is L di dt. V equals L di dt. What this says is that the current through an inductor cannot change instantaneously. That would require infinite voltage. So, uh, and we don't have infinite voltage, we have 100 volts. So what we can assume is that if the current is zero amps right before the switch is closed, then the current is also zero amps right after the switch is closed. So we're going to say that I of zero equals zero amps. And that's the I initial value. Okay, so we have one of the terms we need for the uh, solution. When we're mm -hmm. solving these types of questions, do we need to write out that like theory, I guess, or can we just like assume that I, uh, the current of I, the initial current, there you go, is mm -hmm. zero? You can just assume it's zero. Okay. Um, just know why you're doing it, because I'll show you that the voltage can, like affirmatively, can change instantaneously. So, okay. so make sure you don't make the assumption that V of zero minus equals V of zero plus for an inductor. Okay, that only works for a capacitor. So, so you don't okay. have to write this down, but just make sure you understand why it's happening. Do you mean for a capacitor and not a con uh, inductor? Um, well, for either, you but, should understand right. that for an inductor, current cannot change instantaneously. Yeah, okay. I, I think you swapped them. Oh, were... sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, yeah. <laughs> I'm, ta I'm, uh, I'm talking faster than I'm thinking. I understand, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I hope the, the other 100 people do also. Um, so for t, for t uh, much greater than zero, that's the case for finding i sub f. Uh, well, let's draw that equivalent circuit. Okay, so the switch is closed. T is greater than zero. The inductor then becomes a short because it has zero volts across it. When current's not changing, the derivative is zero, voltage is zero. Okay, so this resistance is 50 ohms. I have a 100 volt source over 50 ohms, so I of T, for T much greater than zero, is 100 over 50, that's two amps. T much greater than zero, just to emphasize that. So IF equals two amps. Now tau, I just I just gave you this, I just gave you L over R. Again, if you worked the differential equation approach for this circuit, and you're welcome to do that. It's it's the same approach that we used for the RC circuit. I'm just kind of shortcutting to the, the time constant here. It'll be 0 0.1 over 50, which is 0 0.002. And the units of a time constant, as you would expect, it's time or seconds. 
So you could also say that's two milliseconds. So now I can write based on this equation, I of t equals I f, that's two, plus I initial, that's zero, minus I f, that's two, e to the minus t over 0 0.002. Okay, so we can do some math here. I'm going to change that, bring that in the numerator. Of... Okay. So there you go. That's another way to solve these these problems. Um, Any questions on how I did that? Uh, yeah, I have a question about the time constant. Um, mm -hmm. So for an RL circuit, can we always assume that tau is always just going to be L over R? As long as R and L are in series. If you have this exact circuit, and I'm going to show you in, in the next example, if you have a more complicated circuit, how to convert it to this circuit. But yes, if you have an R and an L in series, then the time constant will be L over R. Okay, and the, the same is true for RC circuits. If you have like, if you have them also in series, then tau is just R times C. That's right. If you have a series R and a series C, tau will be RC. Okay, That's thank right. you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me erase part of this. I'm going to keep some of this up on the screen. So we found these values. So we want to find V of T now. So V of T, I just had the equation written there. V for an inductor is, I'm looking for the voltage across this inductor, given I know the current through the inductor. So V equals L di dt. Okay, so that equals uh, 0 0.1 times the derivative of 2 minus 2 e to the minus 500 t. All right, take the derivative of this. Okay, so what's that? 0 0.1 times, let's see, derivative of 2 goes away. I get a minus 2 see uh, the minus 2 comes out right times minus 500 that's a thousand e to the minus 500 T okay so I just found voltage just with L D I D T uh, professor Yes. So with an RC circuit, would you just do the same thing if you wanted to find current? That's right. If you knew um, the voltage across a capacitor, I is equal to C dV dt. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And make sure you get the signs right. Make sure you get the current reference direction pointed into the positive side of the voltage when you use those equations. It's just like Ohm's law. You gotta, uh, if, if the arrow is going the wrong way, you have to flip the arrow and put a negative sign in front of the current. Okay, so let's take a look at this. If I plot uh, I of t versus time, let's even go negative here, and V of t versus time. Um, well, if, if you look at this equation, uh, or, or even what's going to happen here, before t equals zero, this is zero and zero, before t equals zero, you've got a flat line at zero, and then you get an exponential rise to this steady state value, uh, 
which which we know is let's see two amps. So it's going to look like this, All right? Something like that. And the point at which it converges is five tau. Right, in this case, five times two milliseconds, it's 10 milliseconds. So if you built the circuit and apply a step voltage to it, it would take 10 milliseconds to rise to steady state. The voltage is interesting because, well, right before T equals zero, I have zero volts. This part of the circuit isn't connected to anything. One side is disconnected from the circuit. So I have zero volts. You could also argue, um, V equals L D I D T. I is not changing, so voltage is zero before T equals zero. And then all of a sudden, if you look at the equation, when T equals zero, you get E to the zero times 100, you step instantaneously right up to 100 volts. Right? So you go straight up there. And then an exponential decay. Right? So right here, this would also be 5 tau. So that's what the voltage and the current would look like for this inductor. What I wanted to point out here is that although current cannot change instantaneously through an inductor, voltage across an inductor can affirmatively change. Okay. Time. Uh, professor? Yes. So then is, um... Is there like an analogous statement for an RC circuit that current can change instantaneously or no? Uh, yeah, it, it can. So for um, I equals C dV dt, right? Uh, you cannot have a step change in voltage, but you can have a step change in, in current. Okay. That's right. mm -hmm. Yeah, that derivative enforces that. Okay, other questions on this? Okay, uh, let's work something a little more complicated. Let's, let's still work an RL circuit, but let's make it a little more complicated. Let's say the switch opens up at T equals zero. It's a switch that shorts out that six ohm resistor. Let's find I of T. Okay, and let's let's use I F or I of T equals I F plus I I minus I F E to the minus T over tau. All right. So for I initial, right, where, where T is less than zero, um, you, you wind up with a circuit that looks like this, 24 amps. 12 ohms. And um, I have a shorted six ohm resistor, right? So zero in parallel with six is zero. So I have just this, right? This, uh, oh, sorry. All right, so the inductor is also shorted.
trying to find I of T. Okay, and so what I what I what I want to find from this circuit now that the switch is closed, the inductor's at steady state. Uh, let's make some observations here that the voltage across this 12 ohm resistor is zero volts. I've shorted both sides together. They're the same node on both sides of the 12 ohm resistor. So uh, that means I have zero amps, Ohm's law, right, going down into that uh, resistor. And so all of that 24 amps goes this way. And so I of T is equal to 24 amps. And again, that's for T less than zero. Okay, that's an I. Okay, so uh, let's work on, that's an I. Let's work on IF. That's T much greater than zero. Okay, so you get something that looks like this. Let me make sure I can fit it down here. So that six amp or six ohm resistor is in the circuit now because the switch is open across it. The inductor is at uh, steady state. Let me go back and mention something here. I, I don't think I, 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 I called this out, but whenever you have these circuits where something happens at some time, T equals zero, you can assume that long, uh, that any changes happened long before the switch changed states. In other words, this switch has been open or it, I'm sorry, it's been closed for a long time. So before T equals zero, the switch has been closed for a long time. That means this circuit was in steady state before that switch opened up. Then changes happen and the circuit reaches steady state again. So that's why I was able to, well down here, assume that the inductor looks like it's in steady state right before t equals zero. And then much after t equals zero, well, the same thing happens. You get this uh, inductor in steady state. And so this is going to be a current division problem. So by current division, right, I of t equals 24, right, this is 24, amps coming into that parallel pair of resistors times one over six, one over six, one over 12, and I get 16 amps, right? So that's my IF. So now I can put this all together and um, I can say uh, I, T equals IF 16 plus I initial 24 minus 16 E to the minus T over tau. I still don't have tau. So I know that tau is going to be L over R for the series combination of an, a resistor and an inductor, but I don't have a series combination here. I have this like inductor and two resistors, so I don't know which R to use. So the answer is this. The answer is that somehow you have to get your circuit in order to find tau and calculate L over R, you have to get your circuit into this form right, because that's what we just solved. That's what we solved on for the last problem. Well, this should look familiar. This is, I, let me put two dots here. To the left of that inductor 
is a Thevenin equivalent circuit, right? It's a source uh, VT and a resistance RT, and it's connected to an inductor L, in this case, 0.1 Henry's. If we can get this circuit on the left, right, put red terminals there, into that form, then tau is equal to L over RT. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next time. We'll break here, uh, but we'll continue this problem next time in order to find tau using the Thevenin equivalent circuit. So we're going to have to calculate the Thevenin equivalent circuit to the left of those red dots after t equals zero. Okay, so what I'm going to do is end this problem midway right here. We'll finish that next time. Remember, uh, homework four will not be due on Wednesday. So don't worry about doing homework four. I'll also post that on, on Canvas. Um, the exam solutions are posted. Uh, don't forget pre-lab four due Thursday. Start lab four on this Friday. Try to start working on that early because uh, the circuit, make sure you get that circuit right. Uh, give yourself some time to, to get that built. See the Slack workspace uh, for any help on that lab or the upcoming homework when I announce it's due. And that's it. Thanks for joining class. I hope it's working out well. Let me know if it's not. Uh, shoot me an email. Um, I'll start office hours in about a minute. And thanks for joining.